How's it going, everybody? It's Erin. And Nicole. This is Dude That's Fucked Up. Welcome. How are you? How is everyone out in the cyberverse? This eve? This morn? This afternoon? This (laughs) après-midi? Oh, très bien. Très bien. Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va? Um, I just did my French lesson right before this, so. Oh, lovely. Mm -hmm. Um, I have not tried, attempted to do any sort of thing constructive today, so good on you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, Jack. I know, (laughs) my baby. Oh, yeah, baby. I meant to make him a little video that's saying happy birthday. I'll do it tomorrow. Um, he's two. He's, He's I have two. a two-year-old child. That is so fucking weird to me. Oh, my, oh my God. God. Two years wow. ago, right now, you had a newborn baby, and you were like, oh, my God. Yeah, and I was like, oh, fuck, what oh, fuck. have I done? No. <laughs> it was weird, man. What a time. I still remember it very vividly. You I'm know, sure. people say, like, you are supposed to, like, have amnesia about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember all. <laughs> so much. <laughs> So much. Don't let anybody tell you you don't remember that shit because you sure, surely do. You Um, sure as shit remember it. I was only in labor for 12 hours. I feel like that was. You got a fizzy? I got a pretty. I mean, it wasn't great, but. Yeah. Yeah. You, um, you, uh, well, some people go for like three days and shit. I know. I know. That's But it, if was, you have another one, you'll just shit it right out. Like, they just come right out, you know? Apparently. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. I wonder if it'll be like how when I got my uh, second IUD, that shit didn't, like, I didn't yeah. even feel that. So, like, after I had, you know, given birth, it's like your cervix is like, all right, whatever. Just, it's just open now. I guess we're, we're just open, yeah. Open for biz. <laughs> Speaking of biz, uh, any, any biz today? Um, yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you to everyone. We, we, uh, recorded this too soon around the live show. Like we recorded the last episode too soon around the live show, mm-hmm. right before the live show actually. So we didn't have a, a full tally yet for tickets sold, but thank you to everyone who joined again. It was so much fun. We loved seeing your chat. We had to like rewatch it after so many fun things. I haven't even finished watching it. Yeah. But yeah, but just like from the little that I saw, it was so much fun. And we were able to raise uh 430? Yeah, $430. Uh Oh my god. So that's $215 to each organization to the Mar- Marsha P Johnson Institute and to uh Dignity and Power Now. Oh my uh, god. Each got 215 bucks. Uh thank you so much to you guys oh. for for hanging with us and yeah. participating and it was amazing so thank you again amazing yes thank you that was oh it's so cool that we got to do that it was really I fun we, we just did our donations yesterday and it was so fun being like here's a huge chunk of money I've never donated that much money at yeah. once like that's wild you know <sighs> I know um, it felt really so, good yeah it felt so good so and we um, had so much fun doing it like oh I know. my god it was I mean, it's, it's just doing this you know it's, like I can't believe that we got to do that. That was I know. very cool. Um, that was cool. Hopefully and you all we made do it, it again. You all made it possible. So thank you so mm-hmm. much for that. Um, yeah. Anything else? Uh, should we move on to our fucked ups of the week? Sure. Let's do it. Um, I, I don't really have anything that I could think of off the top of my head, except that mm. I am the parent of a two-year-old now. So oh that's weird. <laughs> I mean, I know it doesn't compute in your mind. It certainly does not compute in my mind. But like, I'm sure it computes in your mind. More. I mean, I, I like, as I was like going, I made like a little like Instagram little post about oh. it, and I, and I made I made it so it's like a series of pictures, f- start, starting from because I'd never did that like thing of where you post like the one month picture, the two month picture, yeah, the yeah, month, yeah, you know, like how people yeah. do that. Uh, just because I was like always out of my mind uh, and <laughs> yeah. didn't know what day it was, let alone what month it was. So I just never – I just would randomly post pictures when the mood would strike and I could, yeah. you know, have a You're not a, a huge poster as is. Like you're not posting yeah. every aspect of your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I just was like, you know, uh, I'm going to post this little cute thing and 
Um, it, I, it definitely like got me a little bit though. I was like, holy shit. It's so oh crazy God. to see, like, that's why people do that is to see yeah. the progression over time of their babies, Yeah, you know, growing up and it's, uh, pretty wild to, it's like all of a sudden he's just this little kid now. And it's so crazy to think too, that we started this podcast, uh, before I was even pregnant and mm-hmm. people who have listened since the beginning, have kind of, I don't know, I guess, been along on the journey with us mm-hmm. uh, as Jack has grown up, and it's really crazy to think about. Mm. So That's wild. Little baby Jack. Little baby Jack. Oh, well, and it's also like not – it's not like you don't have a billion pictures of him, and like no. you yeah, could I go definitely. back and like yeah. – Yeah, you could do that if you wanted to, but um, yeah. Oh, that's And I so did. <laughs> and you <laughs> did, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, perfect. What about you? Anything fucked up for you this week? Uh, Well, real quick, not to be like full down or anything, but uh, Pete's Grandma Mary passed away this morning. Oh, Grandma Mary. I know. We were so sad. We are so sad, but it was super nice. We got to, his brother Sam somehow got to go to the nursing home yesterday when they kind of like started her on morphine and stuff. They were like, I think it's happening. That's, that's the, when it yeah. starts. Yeah. That's the beginning of yeah. the end. Yeah, and so um, so her son, um, Pete's uncle, was supposed to go, but, like, couldn't leave work or something happened, and it was, like, a very small window. It's, like, you yeah. you guys can come here if you want, but, like, with all the COVID shit going on, you know, it's, like, I don't know if they had to sneak him in the back door or whatever uh, and was, like, go straight to her room or, you right, know, I right, don't know right. how it was. Well, they, it's, like, she's on her way out right. anyways. It's she's not, not going like, to catch it. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know what the situation was, but Sam FaceTimed us yesterday randomly and luckily we were like both, you know, at home and like not busy doing anything. And so we got to like say hi to her and she like opened her eyes, but she, she wasn't talking or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, but we got to say goodbye Mm -hmm. and that was really nice. And so we've just been thinking about her a lot today and, Mm -hmm. uh, it was so nice having a third grandma. And she was just so precious and sweet. And, you know, I had talked about how she was having a hard time a little while ago. Mm -hmm. But then she, like, pulled through. She was like, I'm celebrating my fucking birthday. I think she was, like, 94. She's like, I'm celebrating my birthday. I'm eating a bratwurst. I'm drinking a beer. No one's going (laughs) to, you know, no one's going to keep me from that. And she made it. Good for her. Yeah. So good for her. And now, like my dad said today, hey, when it's time to go, it's time to go. That's right. She did it, and I think she was comfortable, and yeah, Aww, I think Grandma yeah. Mary rest Grandma in Mary. peace, you sweet, Grandma sweet Mary. lady. I know Aww. what a treasure. But um, okay, that's like not the fucked up thing. It just happened to happen. I do want to say uh, thank you to everyone who gave me a heads up. I oh, got God. fucking impostered on Instagram. Like some bot took my picture, made an account. It kind of looked like my name but it wasn't and it was like and then they were like hitting people up for money and and talking about thanking god and all this stuff which was the big tip that it wasn't me just a heads up Um, that would never be a sentence that would come out of nicole's mouth ever never never or my thumbs um she would never ask for money and she would never (laughs) and she would unless it was for like a good cause obviously yeah yeah. Not for herself. And she would never say shit about God unless it was like, yeah. fuck shit. this religion, yeah. you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that was a tip off. And it was very, everyone was very sweet. I was very grateful for for the people that DM'd me. And uh, I felt so bad. Some of my friends like had conversations and then was like, wait, what? I can't believe you got uh, imp- like trolled. It, yeah. Like impostered or whatever it's called. Uh duped i don't know i know Uh, there's nothing i could do about it either it's not like my account got hacked or my it's like every but they took your pictures they took a picture yeah Yeah, but like you could screenshot it and then just crop it and it looks like a photo and then it's creepy it's so creepy yeah but so i reported it as spam other people reported it as spam it still wasn't getting shut down. I was still, like, until yesterday afternoon getting messages about it oh my from God. people I, like, don't really know very well, and I was so embarrassed. So I, I filled out a report, and I had to send a um, picture of my license and me in it, like, to verify oh that this is me, not that. Oh, my God. Um, 
but it ha- I don't I don't know if it's still there, but hopefully what it gets the taken down. Fuck? Yeah, isn't that fucked up? That's so insane. I, I know. That means you are like basically famous. I don't know. I mean, I I yeah. I mean, nothing has changed except for someone stole my photo and made a burner account with my name. So. <sighs> People are so uh, fucking crazy. Uh, yeah. Also, by the way, sorry to interrupt, mm. but your makeup is stunning. Thank you. Um, I was like, oh, we're like videotaping this now and you always look so polished and like your skin looks flawless and I just look really white like in our videos. And so I was like, you know, I'm going to put on some lipstick. Maybe that'll help some eyeliner. It. The lipstick is a poppin'. Okay, but this is what happens. Sorry for everyone who's listening and not looking on YouTube, but, like, you could check out YouTube if you want. This is what happens as we age, but we still do our makeup like we're a teenager. Mm -hmm. Um, So I kind of, like, you know, raised my eyebrow and did my... um, Your cat eye. Eyeliner. I might Mm -hmm. do a cat eye. But then when I'm not doing this by raising my eyebrows and I just relax and I turn to the side, it's like a step. It's like a staircase. Oh, yeah. It just collapsed in on itself. So beware if you're going to do that. Um, I just. It's not a wing. I used to do. I used to do like winged liner all the time Mm -hmm. with like a, a, you know, like a bright lip. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Haven't done that in a long time. Neither. uh, Because of it. it, it, Yeah. Because it like makes like a fucking 90 degree angle now when I try to do it. I can't. My eyelid has like an overbite and it was like. (laughs) (laughs) Also, one of my eyes is like a little bit like droopier than the other. And it's like it makes it. And it's only gotten worse over time. Like I have like a lazy eye now. And it's just like it's only it only serves to emphasize that. When I it like draws do. attention to mm-hmm. it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. But you know, what are you going to do? It's what like, are you going to do? Yeah. I still wanted to have fun. And the lipstick alone looked weird. I didn't, it looked like you need a little something else. And mm-hmm. I was like, I found an eyeliner and I was like, fucking cat eye, baby. Fucking do it, man. Just do it. Fucking do it. You only live once, you know? R.I.P. Right. Grim and Mary. YOLO. YOLO. <laughs> That's what we used to say when we were young. Mm. We never said that. No. <laughs> uh, God. Well, sorry you got impostered. That mm-hmm. was terrible. What yeah. a what a nightmare. Um, but I'm glad it's over. Sort yeah. of, maybe. Hopefully, maybe. Ooh. What a headache. Oh. <laughs> is that relevant? It sure is. It's a segue. Oh! Yeah. So, 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 segue, segue. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 segs in the city. Two. A, two. <laughs> when there's multiple locations of a Segway company. <laughs> so, so, segs in the city. The uh, early years. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh. That's a clue about what we're talking about. Um, headaches. Mm. Uh, oh, my God. God, it is... This topic is something else. I, I've I've heard of this. I I've listened to podcasts about this event. Oh, okay. Um, but I never. I I like it. Just kind of was a blip on my radar. I didn't really yeah. think too much about it. Or I don't know. Um. Yeah. Same. I think we someone suggested this as a topic to us joining the Facebook group. So yeah. And yeah. I'm, I I asked DJ if he'd heard of it, and he's like, I think I have, but like it's one of those things where it's like. It, it, it's something that it like tickles a little memory in your mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it is the Tylenol murders of Ooh. the 1980s in Chicago. OMG, it affected a nation. Woo. Also, like, if anyone's ever wondered why, like, it's so hard to open a fucking pill bottle that you bought like a Tylenol bottle or with liquid gel Advil whatever yeah um and you have to like lance that foil boil that's on top it's like you have to like find something to stab it I don't use yeah. my thumb because you could break a nail yeah fuck that fuck um, that you have to use but, like a knife but it's necessary because yeah, we don't want that shit tampered with um Dude, and that's what happened that's what happened um specifically it happened to ty- the brand Tylenol mm-hmm TM. And it was it was somebody poisoned a 
a bunch of bottles of Tylenol in the 1980s mm-hmm. uh, with cyanide, potassium cyanide, Oof. which is <laughs> really it's, scary. Yeah. It's real bad poison. It's yeah. l- lethal poison. It's like that poison that, uh, like, if you ever watch, like, a spy movie or, uh, like, yeah. a Nazi movie where, or, like, World War Two Nazi fighting people, I don't know, and the person, <laughs> the bad guy, like, bites a capsule and it, like, dissolves oh, and they die. Like, yeah, instantly. spies, like, are rumored to carry one with them because you, yeah. you can't get caught. Yeah, you so you don't to... get, yeah, you need to, if you're, yeah, so... I was this wondering is, where you were going with this because I was thinking like a dart or something where it's like, no. and then it's like, and they're like, oh. No, it's like you have a false tooth and that's where you keep your cyanide pill and then and you, you die. Snap it off. Oh, okay. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. So in 1982, the Chicago area was hit with a string of deaths from people dying of cyanide poisoning. Now, cyanide poisoning doesn't just happen. Like it. Yeah. It's 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 pretty fucked up like there's and there seemed to be no rhyme or reason and to me that's truly terrifying like just somebody dropping dead from fucking cyanide yeah um uh the only thing that could be determined was that all of the victims had taken tylenol branded uh acetaminophen capsules Mm -hmm. and those are what were laced with the cyanide a total of seven people died in the original poisonings with several more deaths and subsequent copycat crimes, oh. which, fuck that. Um, yeah. I hate people. Mm-hmm. So the very first case happened uh, early in the morning of September 29th, 1982. Uh, Mary Kellerman, a 12-year-old girl from Elk Grove Village, which is a suburb of Chicago, woke up not feeling great. She had a sore throat, runny nose, and she told her parents she wasn't feeling good, and they gave her a single extra strength Tylenol capsule, mm. um, and they unknow- unknowingly gave their daughter a cyanide-laced capsule, and within a couple hours, uh, Mary was dead. Oh, my God. It's fucking devastating. Ugh. Dude. Yeah, it was like, it was literally, because I think she woke up at like, 7 a.m. or something and was like, I'm not feeling good. And they're like, mm-hmm. here, take this. And by 9.30 a.m. she had died. died. Yeah. It was like pretty – like she was immediately affected and then yeah. died. Uh, also, I, like I don't – I'm not exactly familiar with the um, – effects of cyanide which we're gonna go through in a second but the hospital staff initially assumed she had a stroke which it's like is that a common thing for 12 year old girls like i mean a stroke can happen to anybody uh i mean it's not common i guess like an aneurysm could call cause a stroke or something right right like Mm -hmm. it's like a similar okay okay yeah i mean i was like that's weird it's not common but you know it's not common at all having a 12 year old ingest cyanide so or a 12 year old dying like yeah it's not that common yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah. oh my god yeah so that was really really scary um they didn't understand but uh later that same day fuck yeah oh my god Uh, A 27-year-old postal worker named Adam Janis of Arlington Heights, Illinois, died of what was initially thought to be a massive heart attack, but turned out to be cyanide poisoning as well. Um, And this is one of the most fucked up things I have ever conceptualized in my mind, This the following things that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So his his brother and his sister-in-law, Stanley, who's his brother, and Teresa, his wife, Mm -hmm. uh, of... Liesel, Illinois, came home, like, came to his home after they heard about his death to comfort, like, the rest of the family. They all gathered and be with her. You know, they wanted to be with each other. And um, Stanley and Teresa both started getting a headache, uh, probably from crying all day and just being Mm -hmm. generally, like, sad and stressed out and very upset. So uh, they went into into, uh, Adam's medicine cabinet they're at his house and they grab the tylenol and they both take they take the tylenol and they uh they took they took it and they they had they that capsule that they each took or two capsules whatever right had cyanide in it also and they both died um stanley died that day and then Teresa died two days later um just absolutely fucking awful 
Dude. Um, it, yeah, because I think, yeah, they collapsed, like, and entered a coma or whatever. Like, it was all very quick. Yeah. Um, and the whole family was there. And this is, like, even another level of fucked up to me. Mm. So there was a bunch of family there, obviously, uh, they called the EMTs or whatever. They called 911. The emergency services came. They found these two people who were dying or, like, already dead. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, my God, it must be a carbon monoxide poisoning. So they made everyone leave, come to the hospital. Because the two people died, they were so convinced that everyone was affected and, like, people were not going to come back from this that they had a priest come and read – their last rights to, to like the family. everybody. Oh yeah. my fucking god! They're like, you're gonna die now. Like, we're sorry. It's carbon monoxide. There's no turning back. I, I like don't that's really understand how that this. Works, I, but... I know. I don't know. I don't know. But that's uh, that's something I read. Maybe it's fake. I mean, it was on the internet. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. But either way, like either it's way, the trauma. Uh, I mean, even if that didn't happen, even if it was yeah. like sort of what happened, it's yeah. the fact that to additional family members of this man died died of the same exact thing that killed him and they didn't even know what was happening it can you imagine how oh my terrifying god. that must have been oh my god Fuck. the level of exhaustion of having been notified that one person died in this family yeah. getting there and then have two people die in front of you maybe they were Fuck. like so f- exhausted and like fucked up people were like oh, no, it must be carbon monoxide. Like, they're going to die, too. Who knows? I would, you know? I would just think that I somebody was killing uh, my family. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I yeah. thought I would think that we were being targeted somehow. That would yeah. be um, insane. Um, so, yeah, they – obviously, the rest of the family, aside from the the two, the, the brother and the sister-in-law, they were all fine. Mm-hmm. Um, it, not fine. They were extremely traumatized yes. from all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, over the next few days, uh, three more people in the Chicago area died mysteriously. Twenty-seven-year-old uh, oh Mary Reiner of Winfield, Illinois, uh, oh. Oof. Oh just so God. young. All these people, are y- really young. So uh, young, but also she had just given birth to her fourth child, <sighs> and the reason she took a Tylenol is because she had given birth so recently that like she was still in pain from that. And that's why she took the and Tylenol. And that's why she took the Tylenol. Fuck. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. I'm just thinking about all the times I took Tylenol when I was, Dude. like, still recovering from giving birth. Oh, my God. I just took um, two, like, no-name brand, whatever, uh, like, ibuprofen. And then I was mm-hmm. like, right when I took them, I-, I was like, oh, no. I know. I know. But <laughs> it's fine. Uh, yeah. And I know it's fine because there was a seal, but we'll get to that later. Uh, 35-year-old Mary McFarland of Elmhurst, Illinois. Uh, mm-hmm. She was a single mother of two. She took a Tylenol at work because she probably had a headache or back mm-hmm. hurt or some shit. And she yeah. just, you know, took Tylenol, not even thinking about it. And yep. bam. Yep. Cyanide. Uh, 35-year-old Paula Prince of Chicago. Uh, she was a flight attendant, I guess. Mm-hmm. And she had just got back from Vegas. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, you know, needed to relax and recharge her batteries after probably a four or three hour flight, whatever. Yeah. She took a Tylenol and that was it. Yeah. Uh well she bought a she bought a brand new bottle of Tylenol from Walgreens, I guess, when she got home from the flight. Yeah, uh, they had her they like later found her on camera. So it was, yeah, brand new. Mm-hmm. And that and that had that was one of the bottles that had a uh, laced cyanide pills in it um Mm -hmm. or laced with cyanide um so investigators pretty quickly figured out that there was the link between the poisoning deaths and the tylenol uh Mm -hmm. it was exclusively tylenol um and at the time it tylenol was a best-selling non-prescription pain reliever sold in the united states Mm. so um there it was everywhere it was in everybody's medicine cabinet it's in my medicine cabinet right now like think about Think about it like that. Like think about all the things that you just innocu- – are very innocuous and you have in your cupboard or your, your medicine cabinet and what of those things might kill you. Dude, um, even think about like how some t- – like it's almost like people say um, I I want a Coke but they just mean a soda. Yeah. It's, it's mm-hmm. like that thing too where it, it's such a popular 
you know, mm-hmm. item that people say, oh, I want, uh, um, do you have a Tylenol? I have a headache. And they're like, oh, I only have Advil. And you're like, yeah, that's fine. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the it's same like, thing. It, like calling a tissue a Kleenex. Exactly. Like that's the brand name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So, yeah, they, through the investigation, uh, the various bottles of Tylenol that were in the homes of the people who died uh, were collected and it was determined that the uh, the bottles contained individual pills that had been laced with tons of cyanide. Mm. So those single singular pills could have killed thousands of people. It's oh my so God. terrifying. That is like the opposite of microdosing. It's like yeah. macro dosing. It's like yeah. so much poison in one yeah. thing that yeah it, it, like you had no hope to survive no, i was even no, no. wondering like the of the pills in the um in what um the pills in adam janice's house stanley died immediately but Teresa died two days later i wonder if her pill was even poisoned or if it just came into contact like yeah maybe because like she could have had one that was a bit of a small like it could have just like touched one of the other ones but that was Uh, still enough you know what i mean i don't know i don't know yeah because i wonder i thought too i was like was it just like random pills in an entire bottle like a bottle of like 60 pills or whatever and there was like you know 10 poison pills i don't know um or is it one in each but it's so potent that it like contaminated everything yeah maybe oh that's creepy to think about yeah it's creepy um I guess one of the cook county medical examiners uh when they opened up one of the bottles of these tampered with bottles of pills Mm -hmm. they said nothing looked out of the ordinary but um the examiner said when he was he or she was pouring out them out of the bottles they could they could smell the scent of almonds which is a telltale sign of cyanide um like what kind of almonds raw almonds because i don't know i mean i don't know that you know this i don't know but it like yeah it smelled like i guess cyanide smells like bitter almonds which a regular raw almond smells like hay to me. Mm. It's like earthy, but then like a roasted almond smells smoky. I mean, I guess that's smokehouse almonds. <laughs> that's and then there's like, idea. and then there's this the smell of like that like al- sweet almond. I think that's is it bitter almond or sweet almond mo- almond that it smells like. I can't remember. I think it. Well, I read that it smells like bitter almonds, but I'm also okay now that you say sweet almond. Is that the smell that like Mary Kay cosme? Isn't there a sweet almond or like a pink like the almond? like soft so- soft soap hand soap? You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That kind of smell. I don't know. Jergens like cherry almond or something, right? Yeah, I don't. Cyanide. <laughs> <laughs> Jergens cyanide scented lotion. <laughs> yeah, mm, yeah. Mm. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. So that's just oh so fucking creepy. Yeah. Um. McNeil Consumer Products, which is a subsidiary of the healthcare massive corporation Johnson and Johnson, mm-hmm. uh, at the time manufactured Tylenol, and they like immediately were on this because once the investigators were like, something's fucked up with your pills here, figure mm-hmm. it out. They were like, yes, <laughs> we will yeah. figure it. We we don't know what the fuck is happening, but. We got to we gotta say something. Uh, so they immediately issued a warning to the Chicago area and they set up tip lines mm-hmm. for anyone who was like had questions or had any information about the tampering. Um, yeah. So it was like it was a huge for the Chicago area only truly yeah. at the time. Yeah. It was like everybody was like, what? And mm-hmm. there was no internet at the time. So think about how how do you spread the word about – Something like this, where it's like very fucking urgent that no one else takes Tylenol. <laughs> like, how do you do it, dude? They oh, well, probably like through like local news because everyone probably watched the evening news yeah. back then. Like everyone yeah. watched local news newspapers, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but I'm they just... needed it within like minutes, hours, whatever. Yeah. Like immediate, as soon as dude. They, yeah. They fucking sent out police cruisers with loudspeakers and they were alerting people 
like door to door basically yeah Yeah. they were like Mm -hmm. going through neighborhoods and being like do not take tylenol if you have tylenol please throw it away it is we're it is causing deaths it can make whatever like we we're we're trying to figure it out but like do not do not take it and then like you know it was still on shelves so like immediately following that in early october because these deaths happened at the end of september so yeah early october they're like we got to get mo- even more serious about this because we don't know what's going on and they recalled um everything off of shelves in the chicago area that had you know, Tylenol on the name. And they actually found a few more bottles that had tainted pills in them in grocery stores and drug stores in the Chicago area that luckily hadn't been like sold or consumed, but like they, they found them. So they were like, fuck, like good thing. We just recalled all this shit and like hopefully saved people's lives because they could have had way more murders. Yeah. If they chose to not immediately act like people, more people definitely would have died. So, uh, I feel like thank God they found all these, these bottles. It's like a poison golden ticket. It's so (laughs) bad. Like, Oh, (laughs) Oh, yeah. And like Willy Wonka is whoever's doing this and he's like real fucked up. You know what I mean? Like, Dude, that is one of the most fucked up details of this story, which we'll get to in a little bit. But mm-hmm. um, so, but moving on. Yeah. So at this point, though, they don't know if it's just limited to the Chicago area. When they're doing the investigation, they're like, "We we don't know. You gotta you gotta recall everything." So yeah. Johnson and Johnson called for a massive nationwide recall of mm-hmm. more than thirty one million bottles of Tylenol that were in circulation at the time. Oh um, my god. That's wild. Like, it's insane. Uh, All this product had a retail value of over $100 million at the time, which is now equivalent to about $265 million in 2000, well, as of like 2019. Um, Oh my God. It's making me think of like, has there been any other, well, I guess like Volkswagen had that recall a couple mm -hmm. years ago that was very expensive, but like, I'm trying to think like in our lifetime, is there anything else? Yeah, no. there's like nothing where it was that significant. No, where it could literally, it, it was, it wasn't just like, oh, you could incorrectly take this and like some, some new science has changed yeah. or not, you know, something has come to our attention where this is right. like causing. It might give you diarrhea or like, like you know, leakage. like, yeah. yeah, like, like pharmaceuticals recall yeah. pills all the time and there's like tons of lawsuits against all kinds yeah. of different uh, pills, but uh, this was like immediate and dangerous and very very scary. So I mm-hmm. I don't I don't think there's ever been anything like this to happen. Um, and costly. I, I, like I'm wondering uh, if there's like a fuck up of this level, you know? But I don't think there is. It just seems so. It's fucking wild. Uh, yeah. They so they even offered replacement capsules to people who turn in the pills that, Mm-mm. you know, people who had already purchased bottles of, of Tylenol. Yeah. I, if I'd be like, bitch, I don't want any more fucking Tylenol. Are you kidding me? Oh my me? God. <laughs> um, I only take a leave now. First of yeah. all, I only have to take one. So yeah. all day strong, all day long, bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I ain't trying to take eight fucking Tylenol today. God damn yeah. it. In- increase my chances of, of getting a cyanide pill. I'm not trying but, to play fucking Johnson roulette, all right? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is not something I prefer to do. I don't want that golden ticket. Um, no, fucking, it is. What, is cyanide a color? No, it's probably, like, odorless and colorless. No, it smells like almonds. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't want that fucking almond ticket. Get that I'll almond joy almond. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, I'll eat an almond croissant, though. I fucking mm. love those things. Oh, so good. Oh, um... So John and Johnson and Johnson actually put up a hundred thousand dollar reward for anybody who had information <laughs> leading to the apprehension of the of the person who's responsible or people who were responsible for the these murders. I mean, what's a um, hundred thousand dollars when you've already been fucked out of one hundred million dollars? I know. Well, <laughs> they had to say something. Yeah, but, yeah. No, yeah. totally, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh. But yeah, they. I mean. To their credit, they acted extremely quickly uh, and did what they needed to do in this circumstance, which nobody had ever really dealt with, I don't think. So I still don't think they do. This Honestly, like the thing that's interesting about this, I've, I read that 
this would go down in history. Like Johnson and Johnson's reaction would and and they're like they're like pro what are you like you're pro um why am i missing the word when you're like ahead of something no i'm just kidding oh yeah proactive proactive yeah they were like pro no i'm just drinking this um prickly pear guava seltzer oh hell yeah but it's like alcohol Alcohol? Mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's good pete was very proud he got it for me he's like it's like the number one seltzer rated on like these like beer advocate things anyway, oh my god yeah, he's an angel um sorry an angel. yeah uh but yeah so uh johnson and johnson would go down in history as doing this like as remarkable pr it's like oh, wow everybody look at what an example but i would just like to say that's like according to all the fucking mediocre white men that like were running these companies at the time, I would argue they were this just was like, just, Ugh. yeah, they're like, Ugh. remarkable response, Bill. And then it's like, <laughs> fucking, uh, you mean you're just being responsible. Like, you're just taking responsibility for a situation. You don't know what's going on. Like, you're like, being, like, you're being adults. Like, yeah. Okay. This is like, good great. social responsibility. Yeah. yeah. So, it's like, mm, I don't know if it was remarkable. Certainly today it is, because no one acts this way anymore, but. Well, for at the time, though, I mean, Mm -hmm. this is it was the entire thing was remarkable. The entire I mean, the response had to be congruent with what was happening. Yeah. Uh, And I mean, Tylenol at the time controlled more than 35 percent of the over the counter pain reliever market. Mm. Like there was tons of other shit you could buy and stuff. But this they had a massive control of of that market um and only a few weeks after the murders that number plummeted to less than eight percent (gasps) so they this is like more out of like self-preservation like they it it, it's like well we have to do something we're all (laughs) yeah yeah, either way we're fucked we're fucked either way so we might as well like pull out all the stops and like make sure we look like we care <laughs> How, i'm shocked they even had eight percent a few eight uh, percent um a few weeks later because nothing was on the shelves well people <laughs> i guess people were taking them up on the offer of like oh. trading in their old their yeah. their old pills for the new, new ones. pills yeah uh so it was a dire situation um both in terms of of you know the fact that there were human lives at stake and yeah. business and it it, they had to. They had to do something. Yeah. But yeah. Um, and <laughs> as you can imagine, after they did this recall and after everybody found out, the general pub- public found out, like, why there was this recall, everybody freaked the fuck out. Like, yeah. big time. Like I mean, the entire country. Yeah. It yeah. was – I mean, I would say probably the world. Like, that would never cross anybody's mind that that could even happen. Oh, my God. I think before that, like, why would anybody – have that as a concept in their mind until something like that heinous happens. Like you, normal people who aren't, you know, psychopaths don't have that imagine. Maybe they do. I don't know. But like they would never act on it or think that that would actually happen. And then when something like this happens, it's like, what? That's a thing that can happen. Somebody puts cyanide into something that everybody consumes. What? Like, and at this point, at this point, they don't know what's going on. Like, they're still mid-investigation, so it's like they don't know that that the cyanide isn't coming from Tylenol. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like if you – like, I can't even imagine if today something happened where people who were taking Tylenol had an adverse side effect. Not mm-hmm. – let's say they didn't die, but let's say, like, people who were taking Tylenol had, like – started getting like constant diarrhea or something like something innocuous enough the amount of like false information in terms of campaigns that would start the amount of like just trash information that would be out there before we even got to the bottom of what was happening Mm -hmm. and the distrust in over-the-counter medications from people who are like poorly educated and like dum-dums you know what I mean like would be insane and then everyone else would have to be fighting and being like no we're finding why this is happening like 
people I, freak out. I know, but and I, I also think too, in the eighties, this was a time when people still had trust in institutions yeah. and in yeah. corporations. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Johnson and Johnson was still considered a like family company. Totally, um, they still like to tout themselves as a family brand, as a family company that's like yeah. still owned by generations of the Johnson family. No more tears. Uh, no more tears. You know, we all grew up with this shit, but yeah. like at the same time, it. Now, if that happened, we don't have the same kind of, mm. I think, trust in corporations or institutions where yeah. we would, because all this fucking bullshit, yeah, uh, or has brand happened loyalty, over the years. right? Exactly. Like, yeah. Again, I'm trying to think of like other products or brands where something so big has happened that they like didn't come back from. I'm sure they're out there. I just like oh, can't yeah. think of them right now. But like, the I would fact say, like, that any- Tylenol exists still is incredible. Oh, oh my God! I know. Yeah. Um, and the fact that there, it's like Johnson and Johnson is touted as like these fucking geniuses of of PR response. <laughs> I got like, one. I what? know a brand that didn't survive. Yes. Fucking Four Loco. Oh, but it's still alive. <laughs> but not how it was. You know what I mean? Do you remember how popular that shit was? Yeah. People were drinking it. Everywhere, all the time, getting so fucked up because you're like high off energy drink and you're fucked up from the alcohol. Oh my god! It was like this weird, like little space you got to occupy, and then it just went. And now, I I mean, I'm sure people. It's kind of like Zima or whatever. You know, it's like I guess people drink it as a novelty. Who knows? I who knows? There's. I would say like any baby product that has had. Oh sure. You know, over the I don't know. Like, well, like baby powder, you can't, you shouldn't use anymore because oh. it can cause cancer. Like, that's, Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. No wonder everyone has cancer. Truly. Oh, my God. Um, give, it, give it time <laughs> and everything is bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. I believe like that. Like, everything. Everyone yeah. and everything. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, keep your expectations low and you'll never be disappointed. Yep. <laughs> I need to put that on, like, a fancy poster that has, like, like keep your expectations low like hang in there baby like a like a well not even like or just like where it's like word lettering like yeah pray love or whatever live laugh love live laugh love yeah Yeah, but Mm -hmm. it says like have low expectations yeah um it's my life motto um anyway yeah so they people freaked out uh poison Mm -hmm. control lines were flooded with collars and people were trying to i mean it's like I feel like it's like now, if you have a little bit of a sore throat or a cough or something, you're like, I, I should get tested for COVID. Like I have everybody, the COVID. Everybody thinks that they ha- have had it or Truly. or have it now, whatever. And I, I mean, think maybe I have you it do. every day. I, but it's just like you remember, like, oh yeah, I have a functioning like larynx and throat. Yeah. Like, oh, it could just be sore from the weather. <laughs> like, yeah, like, oh, I can't breathe very well. It's like, oh, it's just because we haven't dusted in here and we're stuck in here just breathing dust air yeah. for months. Exactly. You know what I mean? I know. I, w- I was like a little stuffy the other day and I was like, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> do I need to quarantine myself in another room in the house? Like, what oh do I Oh my God. It's like, calm but down, like, bitch. But like, that might be nice. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Honestly. <laughs> I, I tried to do that for Mother's Day. I was like, hey, hey, listen, listen. I'm just going to like sleep in this other room for a couple days and just like yeah. don't bother me. I'm going to like go out the side door. You don't need to hear I don't me. You don't need to see right me. Now. I don't live here yeah. right now. I'm, it's my mommy's getaway, okay? Yeah. But no, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> It lasted like an hour. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, one day. Um, yeah. So people are freaking out um, and like going to the hospital and getting, you know, just generally panic ensued. Um, and this is a good time to go over mm. the symptoms of cyanide poisoning. Okay. And this is straight from the CDC. Mm. Not just any website, but the CDC. Oh, yeah. We didn't make these up. No. Mm-mm. <laughs> Uh, so early symptoms of cyanide poisoning include lightheadedness, giddiness, rapid breathing, nausea, vomiting, feeling of neck constriction and suffocation, confusion, oh restlessness, and anxiety. Uh, that's just to start. Yeah. Then accumulation of fluid in the lungs, which is pulmonary, called also called pulmonary edema, 
which uh, may complicate severe intoxications. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what the case was, I think, in a lot of these. Oh, uh, yeah. Ca- these, severe, uh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, rapid breathing, and then that soon followed by respiratory depression, respiratory arrest, which is you stop breathing. Mm-hmm. Um, severe cyanide poisonings progress to stupor, coma, muscle spasms, in which the head, neck, and spine are arched backwards. That is fucked. That's oh like oh, like exorcism. Like, like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, fuck, dude. Uh, convulsions, seizures, fixed and dilated pupils, and then death. Uh, oh. In serious poisonings, the skin is cold, clammy, and diaphoretic. Uh, blue discolorations of the skin may be a late finding. Severe signs of oxygen deprivation in the absence of blue discoloration of the skin suggests cyanide poisoning. Oh, so my God. That's like when you get a massive dose. Uh, and it's like they pretty, got. Yeah. It's pretty immediate. So I think that's how they determined immediately that this was what it was. Oh. So, yeah. And it was – they as the as the investigation progressed, they they figured out that the poison capsules only came from the Chicago area. Um, they'd come from different plants, which mm-hmm. means like it was manufactured by different pharmaceutical companies around the company or around the country. Mm-hmm. But they all were distributed out from sh- into the Chicago area. Yeah, uh, they were actually like purchased from shelves in Chicago. Yeah, and that suggests that someone had poisoned them post manufacturing, which mm. is important because that gets Johnson and Johnson off the hook, and it yes. and it gives the it it lends itself to the fact that there is a maybe multiple people, but probably a single person who is just out there buying. I I would think like. Buying packages of Tylenol, mm-hmm. taking them home, putting the poison in them, and then putting them back on the shelves. Yeah. Which, I don't know. That seems weird. Um, really? Yeah, I don't know. It seems strange. Like, all of it seems strange mm. when I when I think about it. Uh, I, don't under- ever- I don't oh, understand, what? I guess, why they shut down the entire concept of it being not from... A, a, like I know it's not a single point of origin, but like it could be like all the di- from the distribution place that went out to Chicago area, like pharmacies, right? Like it could be one place. I don't know. Oh, like if uh, like if they all came from the factories to like a shipping warehouse and then yeah. from there went out. Yeah, like I I don't understand. I don't know what the supply chain is like for these types or of things. Or was like. Or was yeah. like. Mm-hmm. But I don't – like, it also – it's just as – I think – I don't know. I, I feel like it's just as uh, easily believable as somebody, a random person running around to different pharmacies. Like, it, it's so random. I don't know. Maybe the, maybe if you look on a map and, like, you plot out where they were living or purchased, it's, like, very like tight. Yeah. proximity, yeah. yeah. Instead of, like, all over Chicago. Yeah. Well, it – at any rate, it did. It was a bit hard to investigate uh, in terms of narrowing down suspects because it was so random and weird. Yeah, uh, but I'm I'm like kind of on the other side of this. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like I don't understand how that was hard because it's like we're dealing with cyanide, which is not a thing that just is like laying around. Um, and then in terms of being paired with a skill set of like being able to infect these pills without changing the look or like, you know, well, like. Well, the way these pills were, were very simple. Like you can make like capsules at home. Like yeah. you can like fill capsules with, you like have a, they like sell things to like make capsules. Like, oh. Uh, that, oh, yeah. Because you, you could like, yeah. You can make people, a supplement for yourself. Like, right, and you right, can, right. And you could swallow it or like make it uh, like a suppository or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, but th- in that's order what to these do were, that, though. but like in order to do that, because it's cyanide, you have to handle it in a specific way. So I'm assuming then that someone would need like access to a lab or something. Like, I'll, I don't know. Like, the fact that. I don't that, think so. Really? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I, I don't think it's that, that complex i think oh. it's to me it sounds like cyanide was not that hard to get mm. uh in the 70s and 80s for like just like cocaine um like you can just get it oh my <laughs> uh, god 
And I think if you tried to get it now, you could probably sure. find it. Oh yeah, the dark pretty web. easily. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know so, the dark. Web. I know so much. Yeah, though. you know. You know, like on the dark web, like where, like where you get your real news from. Yeah. <laughs> according to that girl I went to high school with that I yeah. befriended. I don't think that's the dark I web. Don't. No. <laughs> she just. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But, but yeah, I they know. they had a really hard time trying to fig- like narrow down suspects, and yeah. I guess they did have some leads, including the Unabomber Ted Kaczynski. This was like Dude. much much later, like after the Unabomber happened, they mm. the case was still open for. I think it might still be open because I think it's still open. Spoiler alert. They never found the person responsible for this. Dude, yeah, it's still That's open. That's fucked up. I just think they didn't have enough information back. Like, it's hard. The 80s are a black hole of information, like in terms of kidnappings, killings. Ugh. It's, for some reason, it's like in between when, like, old school detective beats were like, really good like they knew a lot about how to like follow people and track things and then in between technology it's like just the 80s is just and we i would say probably in the 80s we started focusing on the wrong wrong things like the war on drugs and all that shit and all the resources and police departments went to policing communities of color that you know didn't didn't need all that shit. So, and uh, like you said, cocaine was popular. Also, also that, yeah. So, <laughs> and that was all fucking so, rich white, rich yeah. white people that worked on Wall Street, um, detectives or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. So, <laughs> who knows? God, it's a, it's in, it's still to me a miracle that we survived the '80s as children. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but I guess during the initial investigation, they. Uh, had a man named James William Lewis who confessed to the murders, uh, and he did so by issuing a ransom note to Johnson and Johnson, I guess, uh, yeah. which he demanded a million dollars, that and that would make him stop poisoning people. Yeah. All he wanted was one million dollars, and then he would stop with the cyanide. Um, and so investigators immediately found him by finding the prints on the envelope he used to send the fucking ransom note to Johnson and Johnson. Yeah. Um, but they also they ruled him out because those prints did not match any of the prints that they had found. Um and I'm sure there was a lot of other detail that they have on file about the profile of this killer mm-hmm. but needless to say they ruled him out he lived in new york he couldn't have yeah. been in chicago for the murders yeah um uh, but he did get in big fucking trouble uh for trying to do crimes including extortion <laughs> by yeah. sending a ransom note to a massive corporation um it's weird that people think you could just ask for a million dollars and not, like okay say he was the person tampering and poisoning people and like he, you think you're just gonna ask for a million dollars they'll give it to you and that's the end Mm-mm. in what world has that ever worked for anyone that would I'm be gonna, a good topic right now to find it i'm gonna ask for a million dollars if somebody <laughs> out there is listening just give me a million dollars i will have it i can i can do great things with that just give it to me but I'll, I'll take 30K, just like the impersonator bot was asking of people that that's um, right. that I follow or that follow me. I'll just take 30K. I mean, that's fine. You don't even need a million. Just, you know, any amount of money. I any will have it. Any amount of money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this guy got sentenced to 20 years in prison, and he only served 13, but, you know. Yeah, he's out. He's out. He didn't uh, do it, though. He didn't do it. He's just a fucking idiot. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So after this happened, there were a lot of copycats. Um, people are so fucking sick. I don't know why. Uh, I know well, that the- it's like yeah. once the the Pandora box, Pandora's box of these kind of concepts of like mm-hmm. heinousness are open. Like Pandora's some- flaps. <laughs> Pandora's <laughs> flaps. Her her stank <laughs> flaps open, and everybody was like, "Hmm, mm, smells like almonds." <laughs> <laughs> Bitter almond. (laughs) (laughs) Mm, Your flaps smell like bitter almond. You cyanide ass bitch. (laughs) (laughs) So that's the thing. It's like whenever something this heinous happens, people are like, okay, 
that's interesting. I never thought of that. Meh, I'll try it. I'll try it. <laughs> Uh, I but I know like that still happens, but like I feel like maybe the news doesn't really cover copycats as much or something because I feel like I never hear about that many copycats. Well, I they shouldn't because that's what fuels copycats is oh. like sensationalism and people. Yeah. That's people, the news though. That's all we get. I know. Well, and that's the thing. It's like any, but no, I would say the copycats are like school shooters and. Oh, fair. Yeah, you're right. You know, shit like that. Shooters, uh, or yeah. or people who run people over with their cars who are At fucking protests pieces. and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. Um, so three – Or who, three, like, scream and throw a fit in, like, Costco. Yeah. <laughs> no mask wearing fucking yeah. people. Like, yeah. these dumb assholes. Those are copycat crimes, copycat. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so three more people died in the aftermath of Chicago's – Tylenol poisonings. Mm -hmm. Um, A woman in Yonkers, New York, uh, after ingesting extra strength strength Tylenol capsules laced with cyanide died. Uh, Then some Excedrin capsules in Washington State were tampered with, resulting in the deaths of uh, a woman named Susan Snow and Bruce Nickel. Uh, This was, (laughs) I guess, Nickel's wife, Stella, who poisoned the pills. Oh, God. And she, she was like trying to murder her husband, so she went to jail. Um, oh my god, that would be a good story. Uh, and then there was a fourth death in 1984 that was initially ruled a copycat, but was later found to be a suicide. The mm-hmm. person, uh, I guess, got cyanide from a lab that they worked at, and that they took it and died by yeah. si- suicide. Um, my most overwhelming thought, like I've already said at this point, is just like how fucking easy it must have been to just get cyanide. Like if there's all these copycats doing all the cyanide fuckery, mm-hmm. there had to have been just like a warehouse you can just get cyanide. Yeah, cyanide uh, or us. Yeah, Wait, cyanide or us. <laughs> uh, they're, uh, they're, you know how like the Toys R Us guy was Jeffrey the um, – uh, giraffe. Giraffe. Well, mm-hmm. Cyanide or Us was just a little almond with hands. He <laughs> kind of looked like Mr. Peanut, but he was an almond. <laughs> he wore sunglasses instead of a monocle. <laughs> or he's he like, wore two monocles. Bitch, you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> burp, burp. time to die. Time to die. He wore like two monocles and a, a, a like a black cloak. Like yeah. The, um, not the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> Like a like a uh, like death like a yeah yeah Grim yeah, Reaper yeah. Grim Reaper, Grim Reaper, Reaper Crypt Keeper I never noticed that oh huh. there you go um <laughs> like Jonestown had just happened in 1978 oh which, they had fucking they bought it in bulk yeah they, they, <laughs> they went to like <laughs> they had like the club the club card for cyanide or us where they could just buy Fuck. it by the vat um, oh my god I, so if it's like the, people are able to get it. In the seventies, like that, I, I, I just, I, I feel like it should have been a hard stop though, where you, they, they saw Jonestown and it's just like, no more cyanide out on these streets. Where's yeah. the war on cyanide? Mm-hmm. You know, where's the war on these drugs? Well, oh. so the aftermath of this is that it actually in inspired the pharmaceutical food and consumer product industries to develop tamper proof packaging such as mm-hmm. like induction seals uh and then other different quality control methods mm-hmm. uh and then product tampering was made a federal crime in 1983 uh i again nobody had the idea to do this before i guess so they made congress passed a bill and made it a made it a federal crime and well, that new law resulted in remember stella who poisoned her husband stella nichols yeah her, her conviction with the excedrin tampering case uh ended up being a 90-year prison sentence which <gasps> holy fucking shit because it became a federal crime while she was oh yeah also you can't fucking kill people also that but mm. so <laughs> I don't know. Uh, she she tr- she did it before it was a law, though. So yeah, so like she was like the hipster of crime people. She was like cr- the hipster criminal. She's the like, hipster um, murderer. <laughs> yeah, she was the hipster murderer. She's like, um, I like to to poison people like before everyone was doing it. Like I was 
I yeah okay I was a copycat but like that's my lifestyle so <laughs> oh uh, god um also additionally this uh, the Tylenol murders uh prompted the pharmaceutical industry to move away from capsules like I was saying it's just literally the gelatin things that you could pull apart and like dump in water and shit yeah yeah, uh, yeah. so it, they moved away from that and they uh developed more uh, stringent regulations and actually made uh, developed the caplet, which is a tablet that's made in the shape of a capsule. And it, it has – and all these tamper-proof things happen. I mean, we have – what we have today is the result of the yeah. shit. Um, and, you know, that's just good old American ingenuity. <laughs> we, can, we can literally do anything if it means a corporation might lose billions of dollars. Mm-hmm. So, Oh, yeah. That's the only time a fire is lit under anyone's asshole. That's you know the what I mean? only motivation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and within a year – so this the, – let's all come back to – to the fact that Tylenol is still in our our medicine cabinets. Mm -hmm. Within a year and after the investment of more than $100 million, Tylenol sales rebounded and they once again became the nation's favorite over-the-counter pain reliever. (laughs) Wild. What? Yeah. Critics who had prematurely announced the death of the brand Tylenol we're now praising their handling of the matter. And then and now in business school, Johnson and Johnson's recall uh became it like that is canon for how to handle yeah. a PR nightmare, basically. Where you oh just you meet the moment and you do the most. <gasps> Which the most in this case is not then, letting any more people get poisoned by cyanide yeah. by literally removing all the products <laughs> that oh could my possibly God. be at risk. To have a company rebound so fast within a year, I feel like fucking IKEA still hasn't rebounded that fast after the horse meat meatballs. You know what I mean? It's like what? See, I didn't, didn't even that hear about happen? this. I don't think that so. was like years ago. Oh, Ugh. oh, I thought there was like I thought there was that's an urban shoot. legend, bitch. <laughs> No, I think it was don't real. Don't be spurch. Don't be spurch the na- be spurch the name of IKEA. IKEA meatballs. I love. Okay, IKEA meatballs. I'm gonna have to look that up. But no, I think yeah, I was just making a joke. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they have come back from that. I'm sure the sale of their meatballs are well. Remember Jack in the Box? They gave people like E. coli, li- e. coli or listeria yeah. or whatever the fuck Both. in the 80s or 90s. <laughs> Yeah. Remember, and mm-hmm. they came back. Yeah, so true. It can. Ha- it's. It's. Uh. It can happen. I wonder um, if there's still people though, because like even with Jack in the Box, there's like still people who won't eat there because of that. And it's mm-hmm. like you think you think that's still happening. I wonder if there's people like our parents' age that are like yeah. still will not take Tylenol. Maybe that's yeah. true. That's true. Um, I, I know I said before, give it time, and everything becomes trash yeah but honestly like give it more time and it all people just forget and then you're fine you're in the clear um Mm -hmm. and also in case anyone is interested there's an alternate theory about who might have done this and it suggests that the tampering may have been may have happened actually at the distribution in the somewhere within the distribution chain at some point but johnson and johnson covered it up because that would mean they would be liable for all these deaths. And honestly, that seems more plausible to me than just some rando dude walking around masterminding. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, like there could have been a random dude in the distribution like line somewhere who did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it got her out to all these like random pl- random pharmacies mm-hmm. or grocery stores, whatever. Yeah. That makes more sense to me than some dude just like bopping around to like, I'm going to go to Walgreens. I'm going to go to Ralph's. I'm going to go to fucking Wegmans, whatever. Like, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. Sure. Anyway, there's an entire book about it called The Tylenol Mafia written by a former Johnson & Johnson employee or at least he worked at a pharmaceutical company who claims that that it was someone in in a distribution warehouse that might have done this. Couldn't they have done it at a bigger scale? Though, if it was at the distribution, I mean, maybe, maybe, but I, maybe it was like a Willie Long ticket. So they were like, 
Maybe they were just yeah. like I. They work at a Chicago distribution center. They I. But that's the thing. Like we don't know what the supply chain yeah. is like. So true. All we know is that the products were coming from all over the country, and then they were just showed up randomly throughout mm-hmm. the Chicago area. Mm-hmm. I. It, either way, it could. It, it's still very scary to think that the whoever was responsible never was caught. And yeah, it's scary. So it's very creepy. What a terrifying concept. Yeah, it's terrifying. But also, I it makes me happy that it – I mean, this is, like, fucked up, and it's so sad that people died, and I'm not, like, diminishing that. But it does make me thankful that we have tamper-proof packaging for so many products. I mean, even, like, beverages and stuff have a tamper-proof seal so that yeah. you know someone didn't open it, That's put their right. fucking mouth on it, and put it back, which you know people do. Sometimes I find things that have been eaten in the supermarket, mm-hmm. which – Maybe that's someone who needs it. You know, I, whatever. I don't judge. That's, yeah, yeah, I don't judge. But you don't want to buy that. You know, no, it's like you yeah. don't want to buy the thing they put on their mouth um, or had their hand in. I'm a – I'm – especially now, you know, you want fresh, sealed, no germs, no COVID in there. You want but no listen, COVID you don't, contamination. Again, I'm going to go back to the warehouse. It has to be touched by human Dude. hands at some point. You don't know if somebody's slapping their dick on your fucking Twinkie. You don't know what's happening. (laughs) Like all the people working in the Twinkie factory. Oh, my God. They might have stuck your Twinkie down their their fucking dickies at some point. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. That's so rude. (laughs) But it does make me think I kind of want to be in a porn, but instead of being slapped with a dick, I'm slapped with a Twinkie. (laughs) 100%. That sounds fun. And give then me I would the old, eat it. give me the old ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be slapped by a Twinkie, and then the balls are ding dongs, and it's like a fucking mannequin made of Doritos, and then that's it. Give me those snowballs. Then- I'm gonna motorboat those snowballs. <laughs> 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 little oh Debbie, you dirty God. bitch. <laughs> oh, little Debbie. You're the little, devil. Little Debbie, you're the devil. Oh, my God. We <laughs> should stop. Oh, yeah. Lord. Um, thank you guys for listening and oh my watching. Gosh. If you've been watching, who knows? Uh, go to all of I hope s- not because I forgot about halfway through I was on camera. I was just been like, <laughs> you like, uh, yeah, ooh, 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 what else? I, like, realized I was, like, doing something weird with my arm, and then I was like, oh, my God, someone's looking. Oh, God. <laughs> like, it's not just you. Oh, my God. Uh, it's just me. Um, yeah. Go to our uh, Patreon. Check yeah. that out. Ooh, patreon.com slash DTFU podcast. Go to our website, uh, DTFUpodcast.com. Uh, follow us on all the social meds. Yeah. We got Twitter. We got Instagram. We got Facebook thing uh, we got group. fucking youtube we got youtube Oof. Oh my we're God. youtubers now Pfft. we're tubers um <laughs> that's all i got okay all right. i'm done too <laughs> all right <laughs> listen listen here yeah be excellent to yourselves and each other <gasps> bye bye